all right so welcome back again my name is jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial we're trying to see how to build a very simple app using streamlit and then basic python so let's see what we build is it is called time stable app right it's a very simple app that we're trying to explore the concept of using forms and then some visualizations so if i enter in a number here so let's enter in a number like let's say four right and i want to insert the end number so where do i want it to be so as remember time stable so if i click on submit it's going to generate a timetable or time stable yeah for this particular number so as you can see so this was the timetable that was generated right so one one times four because that's four we are generating up to 12. so you could see the timetable here right as you can see very nice and very simple that's not the only thing you can also see that we also have a very nice chat here right which is showing the increment of the numbers as it goes up very very simple perfect you can also get it in this particular form here so if i click on this it's going to be in this particular form so one times four four one times two times four three right this is a very simple app you're trying to build right trying to see how to incorporate all of these features of streamlit into this app so let's see how to build this app from scratch so i head back to my terminal and i'm going to close the old app so this is the old app we're running i'm going to close this app and then going to open another place to start writing some code so i'll go back again to my challenge inside my 30 days of streamlit then i'm going to make a directory called times table app right so let's move into times table app and then let's create a file called app.py it's going to be our main file then let's open this particular directory i'm going to open this particular directory but you can also use Visual Studio Code in case you want, but I prefer Sublime. Okay, so let's see what we build. So I'm just going to import the packages at the top, then we start writing some code. So this is going to be our core packages for Streamlit. Make it bigger so they can see. So in case you have any question or contribution, you can put inside the comment section below. So it's going to be my core packages. So let's call that my core packages. To be important Streamlit as st and then we also be important pandas right so import pandas as pd perfect so that is what would be important now let's create our main function so this main function is going to so me it's going to take in some functions so st dot sub or let's put as title it's going to be my times table app and then we need to create a simple choice for the menu so st dot sidebar dot select boss let's give it a simple menu so the menu in this case is going to be the home and then the about right perfect then let's close this one so it's going to be if me so at any time we call we open this or we run this file this particular main function is what it's going to be run right so let's say that if the choice the person chooses is called to home so this thing that we are using in the future there's going to be multiple page so we will, know, we will not be using this using a different approach right so stay tuned for that so st dot you have gotten it right so this is it so if that's the case so st dot subheader is to tell us that we are in the home page so here page right now you can call it home page today perfect now let's create a form so using a simple form to apply that but this time we don't want to use just a form we want to first of all use a layout so let's use a column layout so i'm going to create two columns so it's going to be column one and then column two right that's going to be for our layout then this is going to be st dot columns then let's give it a column of one for the smaller one and then two for the display right you to say that okay with column one i want you to place a form so let's use with st.forms the name of the form let's call that my form right that is the basic understanding then let's give it two stuff the number that you want to find the time table for so let's call that one as my number the st.test inputs right so we're using test input you can also use number input but i want the person to be able to enter the number right so this must be an integer the next one is going to be the actual end number where we want to compute to so it's going to be st dot number input and this is going to be the number so let's call this the end number right something like that 
right, where you want to type into. This is going to be integer. So the minimum number for this, let's make it 12, and then the maximum value is going to be 200. We don't want more than 200. Perfect. Then let's create a button to so submit button. This is using streamlit forms. So st dot forms submit button. Then I'm going to call that okay. Let's give it a label. The label is going to be submit. That is all right. So let's so if the person click on this, this is going to happen, right? So let's see what you have done so far to make sure that everything is working. I come down here same place and I'm going to use streamlit run so streamlit run app dot pi so to use my default browser which is brief or it can be any browser that you want so whilst it is opening it I'll just come back again to what you are putting so far I'm going to position them well so I can see it side by side and in case you have any question or contribution you can put that in the comment section below and let us know what you are building within this 30 days of streamlit Okay, perfect. So this is supposed to be st dot form, right? Not forms, right? st dot form. Now it's going to open, so it's going to use my default browser. So let's use Chrome to open it. This is it, right? So let me rerun it again. So rerun. By now you know that it's listed on port thousand five hundred, right? Perfect. So this is it. As you can see, everything is working as expected. So we position it beside it so that you can see it side by side. Perfect, right? So now let's see some stuff, right? So everything is working as expected. So the person can enter the number here and then specify the end number. Okay, so if the person clicks on the button, we want to do something. It's going to be if the submit button is clicked, what do I want you to do? I want you to do some stuff, right? If you click on that submit button, I want you to create the next column, the column two, right? And then under column two, I want you to do stuff. So st dot expander. Expander, right? So this is going to be the times table expander. So let's call this times table, right? And I want to specify the time table. So it's going to be say four. This is where the logic comes inside. So let me make it bigger. This is where the main logic is going to be. So it's so very simple, it's going to be for i in range. The range is going to be starting from one and it's going to be at the end number, right? Then we are going to compute the answer. So answer for the result, which is going to be one or i rather star int. We're going to be passing in the number itself. Right, we're going to multiply it to generate our values. Then I'm going to show it to the user. So write. So let's use f string. It's going to be the number. So not the number we are looking through. So i then Float by x times the actual number. So number. Perfect. And now we can just specify the result. So the result is going to be the answer here. So we are just using a string. So we are going to be showing the number multiplied by one or that's a iterative number multiplied by the actual number the person entered here and then the answer. Right. So let's run it and see what you're going to have. So let's always run. It's going to give us this expander be below. So let's enter in a number like let's say seven. Click on submit. If I click on submit, so now we have this timetable stuff here. If I click on it, you can see that we have one times seven, seven, two times seven, three times seven. You see that all the result is coming. Very cool, right? Very nice. So the reason it's giving us this 12 years is because no in count from zero, that explains why. So we can actually add another number to it. So we can add say so plus one right that particular end number plus one so that at least we have it as 30. so let's save it and see so now instead of if i enter 12 here it's going to start generating from 1 to 12 right inclusive of that particular number so you can see that we have gotten the number 12 here perfect because we added plus one to it now we have gotten it now let's make it into a data frame to make it look nicer so how do you do that so we're going to be going with another column so let's bring it one that's one here so let's call that in my range of numbers so this is going to be my time table right 
as data frame as yeah, data frame so the same similar approach is going to be the range of numbers that i'm generating or we can even go without that range of numbers but let's create this range of numbers it's a range of numbers then it's going to be the list commit the entire range that we have so the range one to that particular number Right, perfect. So that's going to generate that particular number. Then we need to specify the multiplication, right? So let's call that one as my results. Which in this case we want to be able to show the that multiplication result. So let's call this here multiplication, something like that. The name is big, but you we'll keep it like that. So we'll be looking through the view. So we're using the same code we have here right to generate something like this so it's very simple in, in our case it's going to be like this so i then multiply this entire stuff so to be first let me make it simple so i'm just going to copy this one here into this place because you want to look through them i'm going to close it here right you are just creating this particular value So let's take off this per two for i in range one and then end number. So this is going to generate the same values that we can print it out. So let me bring it up. Let me expand it so I can see. So what you are doing now, we are just using it on to get the all the range of numbers. It's going to show the multiplication, right? This is going to show the multiplication, so we are just using the same thing. So for i in range of these particular numbers, we are going to generate that particular number, right? Perfect. And then we are going to also work on the actual answers. So the answers is going to be this same thing. So we can even come back to the top here and copy this same thing for the answers. Right. So it's going to be in the format of a list because we want to get everything as a list. So it's going to be the answers. So i times int the number because we must convert to a number so for i in range as we specify number so one and then end right pivot and finally we can now create a data frame so let's go df pd dot data frame and i'm going to pass in the format of the dictionary the number itself so numbers is going to be the range of numbers so range number then the multiplication itself multiplication is going to be the multiplication itself and then the last one is going to be the answers so answer is going to be the answers right so now i can now print it out so st data free data free then df so let's see what you have done so far so what you are doing now you're just generating all the random numbers showing the string and then you are getting the access together. I'm going to convert the entire stuff into a dictionary, right? Into a dictionary and then passing it into a data frame, right? So if I go back to what you have so far, let's run it and see. You can see now it has generated a table. Perfect. Except now my data frame is there, if you can see very well. Right? So I've gotten all the numbers. So I've gotten one and a number. So one times seven is going to seven. 2 times 7 is going to 7. So this is another way. So either we have it in this particular format, cool, or in this data frame format. Okay. Finally, let's do the plot. Right. So to do the plot, the plot is going to be very simple. So I'll come down here. Then I want to generate the plot using Plotly Express. So I'll go to the top of my file, then import Plotly. So import Plotly Express as PS. Then I'll come down and use Plotly to plot it. So that is going to be very simple because we already have a data frame. So since we have a data frame, we just have to pass in the value for our S and for our Y. So let's call this P01 for my plot. To the plot. So P01 is going to be C P01 or plot one, in how you call it. Then Plotly bar i'm going to pass in my value so what is going to my data frame the main data i'm passing 
the s is going to be the numbers and then the y is going to be the answers right so i call it answer yeah let's go to answer then finally this is going to be the color to give it some nice color let's also pass in you can pass in the answers as the color right but let's pass in the numbers perfect now let's plot it so st dot plot lead charts stream is coming from stream and i'm passing my p1 if i save it now and i go back to what we are doing initially consider now i can just type in the number seven times 12 or oh, seven you can see that we have gotten our very nice times table right very very simple all the numbers have been computed perfectly well we have gotten our times table and then we are also going to get our plot here right so the plot is very nice very very simple so that's the basic understanding behind building a times table using streamlet and then basic python right very cool very nice so to recap to build a simple timetable all you need is you just need to understand the concept of iteration right there is a basic magic so for i in range one and then a particular number you multiply it and then you bring out the results right then we to build a data frame we got all the range of numbers the multiplication the answers then we place them into a data frame then we use closely to display them very simple so thank you for watching see you another time stay blessed and check the links below for some interesting materials to help you master machine learning and python and you can also sponsor this channel on patreon see you well. Baka baka.